You know, still, I, still, I have no control over how people see my art. I have no control over that. My director of my solo play says, "You have no control over how people are going to receive your your work, and you have you shouldn't care about that. You should care that you did the best you could and artistically, and and, and that's it. You know. There are people that will not like me. That will will not feel empathy for me or anybody like me, and will not understand still." And not care, and that's okay, or just miss it, still not believe it, or, and it's still maybe not like my artwork, and that's okay because I don't like everybody's artwork, and I don't feel for everybody either, you know. But I have to say, I'm, I'm I think that I'm a very empathetic person because of places that I've been in, and things that I've experienced, and people that I've met, and so that has changed my perception, like. If I didn't meet Esau, I would have I would have a certain stigma about about people with other people with mental illness or other people I was in the hospital with. It had not had I not had the the joy and the just the experience of falling in love with someone with a quote unquote mental illness like Esau, and I didn't meet people like him, especially him. He's just changed my life, you know. He's given me so much, you know, that I still might have that perception like, ooh, this is with a guy, this is a guy with mental illness, this is, ooh, that's scary, I'm scared of this person, and we all have psychophobia, we're talking about psychophobia film, I even have psychophobia, you know, I even have that because, you know, I was talking to my sister and she said, uh, you should be afraid of people, I said, you know, I was on the train the other day and some guy was talking to himself and usually I would sit there and it wouldn't bother me. But this day in particular, I thought, I'm a little scared right now. Should I feel that way after being in the hospital, in and out of hospitals and institutions for 20 years? Should I be a little more, uh, you know, I've sat with people who are talking themselves. They don't, they're don't. they not going to attack you most of the time. They're just, they're in their own world. They're not a danger to society. Yet, at the same time, once in a while, you feel scared. Like, well, I don't know this person, this it's, they're acting weird. Let me just move away on the subway. So this day in particular, everybody was moving away. I, st- I lingered a little longer. Like, yeah, they're just talking to themselves. But then for a second, I'm like, maybe I should move like everybody else and be normal. And that's the normal thing to do is to move. What if something happens to me? And I told my sister, she said, you should move. Because one time I was sitting next to a homeless person. And I thought, uh, oh, I don't want to shun anybody because they smell. And she sat there, and before you know it, the guy went like this and grabbed her hair really hard and wouldn't let go. She was scared to death. And then I told my therapist this story, what happened to me, how I felt on the subway, and then what happened to my sister. And he said, I said, what would you do to my therapist? He said, I would move because the number one thing in life is to protect yourself, and that's something you haven't learned. You need to protect yourself, and you also need to stop taking that aggression you have on being so aggressive towards yourself because you're hard on yourself and you you're aggressive towards yourself in general and you don't protect yourself so you have to learn how to protect yourself and i can't even protect you as your therapist you i'm trying to teach you to, to protect yourself so it's okay it, it's okay to have that 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 fear even of people with mental illness or anybody because i tell my therapist i'm afraid of everybody he goes good you should be you should be afraid of everybody. You need to protect yourself. You should be afraid of everybody. Not everybody. Not everybody in the world is good. Everybody's bad. Everybody's everybody's bad. You know, meaning like there's no difference between someone with mental illness or not. Everybody's dangerous. That's how I look at it. Everybody's scary and dangerous, and everybody has the potential of doing something bad to you. It has nothing to do with mental illness, no mental illness, criminal history, no criminal history. I mean, we've all we've all hung out in that abandoned jail and met the nicest people in the world, the safest people in the world that will do nothing to you, who are hanging out in abandoned mental hospitals because they're homeless and they have no place to go and they're out of work. And that's the, actually that's the film I wanted to make. Um, at some point, I would like to go there. I don't know what's going to happen with that, but I have to be living in Jersey, make a million trips that I don't have money to do. Um, and I don't know how people would feel being on camera, because then, like Issa says, you're going to blow up their spot if you start saying, hey, can I interview you for my film, you know? But there's this, this a perception or a stereotype of what the criminal is, what the mentally ill person is, what the, the person who's raging who they are. You know, but we have to go behind all those, those labels.